Hey guys, how you doing today? It is Steve of the Guru Brew. I thought I would talk to you today about these. These are computer fans and they're used for cooling our computers. There's all types, shapes, and sizes of computer fans and really very little thought is put into a computer fan. And really, um, there are some basic ideas about computer fans that's really helpful to know. So today we're going to cover some information about computer fans. And uh, maybe you'll learn something new today. So let's get started. So as processors and graphics and memory increase in speed, it generates more heat. And that is the need for fans to cool these devices. Back when 486s came out, you started seeing fans sit on the processor. And generally, they had a heat sink on the processor and then the fan on top. And that's pretty much how it is today, too. And before the 486, really passive um, cooling could be achieved just with a heat sink and sitting out in open air because it wasn't getting as hot as the ones do today. I think always the power supplies generally had a fan on them to expel the, the air out of the um, power supply. And that's how it's done today too. Generally there'll be an 80 or 120 millimeter fan on the power supply that expels air out. With today's computers, it's not unusual to have four or five fans inside a computer usually you'll have a couple that are case mounted there's usually one on the front that allows fresh air to come in and then at least one on the back that expels the hot air out as well as the um, power supply has a fan on it to expel the air out also just about all cpus have a cooling block such as this one again that uh, force air onto the cooling block and keep the processors clean, uh, cool. As well as the graphics cards, most just about all modern day graphics cards also have a block and a cooling fan on them. Also, chipsets can also have cooling fans on them, as well as a lot of computers can also have a fan mounted on the side that is pushing air onto the PCI slots and and uh, it allows to keep the internal cards cool. I have seen fans that blow on uh, memory modules as well as I've even seen a fan that blows on a CD burner. If it's a really high optical burner, I have seen fans that also cool those as well. As far as the appearance of fans, I've seen them colored fans and glow-in-the-dark fans and ones that are you know matched in color to the case and they're very popular with modders but the uh, the main thing is is the fan is rated to handle the airflow there's different types of fans quality wise and they use different means of keeping the spindle lubricated the cheapest kind is called a sleeve bearing, and these will often be cheap fans that uh, just have a oiled sleeve that uh, commonly wears out um, and gets louder as time goes on. They're good for vertical locations, but if you try to lay these fans down, the sleeve bearing ones, oftentimes they wear out a lot faster. There's also more expensive ball bearing um, fans, and those don't have the problems associated with laying them horizontal. There's also fluid bearings and magnetic bearings. The fluid bearing ones um, are really nice, but the price is nice too. The magnetic type of uh, bearings actually levitate and those are not usually found in consumer products. This is a typical fan that you might find on a processor of today and you'll notice the shroud on it also helps to direct the airflow where it's needed. This one is directed out the side panel and it gets its air from the, from the side so that's why they have the shroud and it keeps the air from escaping out the shroud and it 
is more directed to the actual heat sink made of aluminum. Here's another type of shroud that's often used. This is actually a mount for a PCI slot and this would fit in an empty PCI slot commonly. And you can use this to cool graphic processors. Here's another type of uh, fan here, and this is a radial fan, and this is commonly found in Apple products. And the reason why they make the shape in a radial is because you actually can get a bigger size fan in a smaller size case if you have to account for the square fan or rectangle. You know, you have these tabs on the side and it's uh, wasted space. You could actually get a round fan in a much in a much more confined space. Most computer fans have at least three connectors on them, like with a Molex connector, like this one. And generally, two of the wires are the positive and negative DC voltage, usually 12 volts. And the third wire can be for things like temperature sensing. A lot of times there'll be a built-in sensor to determine what the heat is. As well as, I know Dell does an RPM test, and they actually slow down the fan or speed it up depending on how much air needs to move in the system. Some computer systems like Dell have proprietary type fans as well as Apple and you cannot buy just an off-the-shelf fan you must uh, buy their fan basically because it has built-in electronics and uncommon mounting holes that must accommodate special situations that can be a real pain so fan sizes are usually in millimeters there's like 40 60 80 120 and up to like 140 millimeter in size and typically they're around 80 millimeters is the average fan size when rating a fan the air pressure is most important for the actual rating there's also air flow and air pressure is measured in millimeters of water it's a measurement that professionals use to measure the pressure of the fan. And then, of course, the airflow is measured in cubic feet per minute, usually. Generally, small fans are used on processors just because of its limited size. However, larger fans can push more air. So something this small is usually a lot louder because it has to go two and three times as fast to produce as much air as this large fan can, just turning slowly. So oftentimes on big processors, you'll see these large fans and the, the revolutions per minute are a lot slower than one of these high revving small ones that have to scream like crazy just to keep things cool. Some ways to keep parts cool inside a computer can be such things as heat pipes that are commonly used on laptops. However, heat pipes are often still used with a radiator and a fan. There are special cases like on GPS units that just use a heat pipe so that they can keep the fan noise down. Also, there's refrigeration and water cooling and I think that uh, in the future, you're probably going to see that more standard on more over-the-counter type systems. Ionic wind is a fairly new technology that uh, they actually ionize wind be between two plates of uh, special steel and it actually cools the air without any moving parts. And that's probably if that works out going to be the future so i hope you got something out of this video there's quite a bit to fans that folks don't really think about and really it's kind of an interesting subject when you get thinking about it i mean it's just a simple device that spins and we don't give much thought to it but uh, really there is a science behind it so let me hear your comments on this video and if you like this kind of video i'll do more thanks for watching we'll see you bye for now 
I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please leave us a thumbs up and a comment if you wish. If you have your own question that you would like answered, please head over to the gurubrewshow.com website, click on the Ask a Tech link and leave a question and maybe we'll answer it in an upcoming show. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.